a Newbury metal bug by a Korean American about and with Korean myths. Hello, fellow book questers. It is I, Aaron the Book Quester, and today I got this great book, When You Trap a Tiger by Ty Keller herself, and well, let's get right on to it. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Lily is a Korean American kid, and she is just vibing. She is in America. And then she's forced to move to her grandma's house alongside with her sister, Sam. And this is later revealed to be because grandma is sick. Now, of course, they both love their grandma and all, but they don't really want to leave their home where they're comfortable with friends and everything. That is not what they want. The life is life, and they've been completely uprooted from their life. And now they go to Harmony. That's the, that's the Korean word for grandma. Harmony's home. There, Lily sees something strange. On the road outside Harmony's driveway, there is a tiger. A tiger like from like from one of the stories that her grandma told her when she was little. And well, obviously Lily was extremely terrified and told it to her grandma as soon as possible and her grandma basically just sort of says that she has a sort of secret history, and that she stole stories from these tigers. That she stole stories, sad ones, stories that she didn't want to hear and she wished wish to forget. That kind of story, she, she, got, she punched them down and put them into jars, and not allowed them to surface any longer. However, now the tiger had found her, they wanted the jars back. And meanwhile, the tiger, the tiger, again, appeared again to Lily. And said, and says that there's, that you have to give me all those stars, those jars, those stories back. Or your harmony, your grandmother, won't become better. And there's this a lot of this story about the two sisters. Basically, in in Korean mythology or folktale, there is a story about where this grandma goes out to buy her two. Uh, no, a mother goes out to buy her two children some food, some duck. However, she comes back. However, on her way back, she gets eaten by this wolf. I mean, by a tiger. Sorry. Oh god, I'm, I'm confusing this with Little Red Riding Hood. And basically, the tiger disguises as, a, as the grandma and forces the two girls to open the door, and all and all and all. And honestly, I remember disliking that particular story just because the grandma, you know, I mean, the mother, you know, dies. So I, I didn't really like stories that where people died. I wanted all, all of them to live happy endings, you know? Like, I, I thought that was a bit weird and not good at that age but you know now now i prefer more interesting plots however that that is a folktale that i actually disliked when i was younger and it references that folktale quite a bit because of the tiger theme and and it just connects with the book my notes need it and then and then so the kid, Lily, she opens the jars and gives back the stories to the tiger. And she gives them back, and the tiger reads the stories out. And it talks about a tiger woman. At night, she was a tiger, and at day, she was a human. However, she could not be both, but she could not take away both. And so she prays to the king of the skies, the sky god, to make her and her daughter, human, completely human, not tiger combined, once again. However, this all this all these stories, they all just come into you, and Lily realizes something. Just being happy isn't the magic of stories. Stories make you feel so many different things, so many different emotions. Sadness, despair hopelessness, but at the same time, hope, happiness, exhilaration. Stories make 
you feel in so many different ways at the exact same time. That is the power of storytelling. And she realizes, why do I have to be a tiger or a human? Why can't I eat both? Why can't I be both? Why can't I both be strong and silent? Okay, why can't I be both things? Strong yet kind and caring. Silent but sometimes loud in order to be heard. You need to be both. The person that can be both is actually the true person who can control herself. And this this theme of you can you have to be a tiger or you have to be a human, you can't be both. That's just ridiculous and Lily realizes this and she realizes this and then she realizes that her grandma who is dying she has to let her go. She had been desperately trying to bargain with the tiger to get her back. However, the tiger wasn't saying that grandma would be healed. She meant that Harmony would go back to her ancestors. And honestly, the ending was so beautifully orchestrated. Like, Lily comes up with her own story, her own version of the two sisters, and just lays it out. And there's a lot of talk about Asian stereotyping in, in the first couple of chapters as well. So that all just kind of, why can't you be both? Why can't I both be Korean and American? Why can't I be belong to both cultures? Why do I have to be stereotyped in one way? Because there's no reason to be. And I guess in some ways it sort of embodies that, that American dream of Starting a new, everyone's the same, everyone's equal, etc., etc. Those American virtues that sort of reflects upon this book as well, and it a lot of it just really made me very I feel very nice inside, really nice and fluffy inside, and it was just so gorgeously well written, and I was just I was just impressed, really really impressed. Couple details, okay, kimchi is a Korean pickle, and that's that pickled marinated cabbage that's really famous because well kimchi's great i love kimchi i'm a korean and sort of okay kimchi comes a lot out in this book but some parts i think are were a bit too exaggerated so for example okay kimchi sometimes my grandma when she makes fresh kimchi she makes me come over and she just grabs it and puts it in my mouth However, in this book, there's actually a part where Lily's craving midnight kimchi goes down at 12 p.m. in the middle of the night to eat kimchi in the middle of the night. It's just, okay, it's a pickle. It's a, it's a pickle. You're meant to eat it with something else. And, and they're, they're treating it like some sort of midnight cereal or something. That That's not how kimchi works. Americans, okay, you guys have like midnight cereal. If I'm hungry in the middle of the night, I'll go out, get a glass of milk, maybe some cereal, something like that, or a banana if it's lying around. Not go to the refrigerator and grab kimchi. That's a pickle. A pickle. Okay, that is not how that works. Kimchi does not equivalent, it's not equivalent to cereal. It's a bit too exaggerated is what I mean. But however, that nice detail with uh, the grandma grabbing kimchi from the container and giving it to Lily, that was a good part, that was well done. That was That is something that could happen, as just as a fresh taste of the kimchi. However, let me tell you, kimchi isn't midnight cereal. That It does not equate to that. Moving on. So what this actually felt like in general was, it was like if Percy Jackson and Hello Universe had a child. <laughs> that was the vibe that I was getting from this. Because the mythology itself was so well combined into the book, that even some parts, some of the mythology that was, some of the folklore that was made up by the author felt completely natural within the Korean culture, which is really, really impressive. And I could tell that a great amount of effort and research went into writing it, which is also extremely impressive. And I really didn't expect the book to go from magical tiger to equivalence and 
learning to love all sides of yourself. That's what basically it equivalent it, it goes on to goes on to make, and I just did not expect that, and that flows so naturally as well. So I really want to give huge props to that. I can understand why this would be a new very metal book. And okay, so one thing I was not also not expecting what I really like is that in Korean mythology, Tiger is like. 99.99999% the bad guy. In this book, the tiger isn't the bad guy. And the tiger the tiger is in fact it's sort of misunderstood in some ways. And like basically I, I read the author's note and it said the author was like she read the book. Uh she read the Korean origin mythology and the and there is a part where a bear and a tiger wants to become a human and want to become a woman and then the tiger fails and is forced to be banished into the wilderness meanwhile the bear becomes a woman and marries marries the sky god's son and becomes happy and happily ever after however she researched and she, she found out the author found out that a bear becoming a woman is actually symbolizes um, a a woman, a girl, or someone who has more freedom to be sort of riled under society to become sort of more polite and more suitable for society and becoming, well, a woman or someone who's ready for civilized society. But then what happens to the tiger, the person who didn't kneel to society's society's pressure? What happens to the tiger who is banished into the wilderness just because she can't follow the rules of that society. And that is one of the reasons why she wrote this book. And I really loved how that connected and how she thinks of these amazing ideas to connect. And I have been saying this so many times in this video, but I was extremely impressed. Fine. And just everything about it was just chef's kiss just that minor detail about kimchi i was slightly triggered by and that's about it so it was just such a great book and the and the book itself a lot of parts was a lot of parts really made me feel go back to just lying in a cot next to my grandma when she's whispering me tales as i sleep my dad whispering me tales as i sleep as i sleep on the cot and it just reminded me of those times and the fact that it can remind me of those times just can affirm how well written the parts are. And for, for children who somehow haven't, don't know these myths, for Korean kids who are growing up without knowing this myth, you guys are missing out. And for other people from other cultures and other countries who are missing out on Korean myths, well, I love myths in general and Korean myths are, well, an interesting bunch. So I would recommend you to go through them. And also, finally, I would recommend you this book. And like always, your book quester, Aaron the book quester, such a great, beautifully written book. It just fills me with creativity and motivation to, well, work on my own creative endeavors. And well, have a great day and see you in the next video. Subscribe and goodbye.